Hey guys, it's Alex Williamson here with a secret history living inside your aquarium. Now we are in a very industrial part of Seattle, but we are just on the other side of the locks, which keep out the salt water and uh, I suppose keep in the fresh water for the most part. And right here we've got a beautiful uh, sunfish. I don't know if you guys can make out the beautiful markings on on uh, her, but she's got uh, just beautiful blue around the lips and on her tail and then some orange on her face. Um, just a really cool fish. And you can actually find these fish in a lake oftentimes uh, in the shallow waters, hence them being called sunfish, pumpkin seed fish. Oh, now we can see the red and some of the other colors in the fish. Um, I hope you guys can see that. Uh, but what they do is they clear out an area with uh, sand predominantly. And so they'll scope out areas in the water, like in this shallow area here, that's full of debris and pollution, sadly. But they will uh, make a circle in the water and they'll clear it up with sand. So you'll see an area like this area here. And they'll clear that up and that will be their nest. And the female will hang out there uh, and guard her young, almost like a cichlid would. So everything from pumpkin seed fish to bluegills to uh, uh, these there's many many varieties of uh, sunfish out there in the United States and we don't usually keep them this water is probably uh, something around 55 or 60 degrees because it's so close to the salt water um, which stays around 50 degrees in the summer here in Seattle uh, but it's really cool to see the bluegills here and to see the sunfish, the pumpkin seed fish, and uh, you know, you get other things like northern pike minnows. But over here, we can actually see, uh, can you see those, honey? Do you, do you see those two fish that just swam off? So they are using this area as a nesting ground and over in the shallows here, maybe, maybe you'll be able to see it. This is a very, these fish have very strong blue markings, which is, uh, really pretty to see and I'd love to get some for an aquarium and they're in probably three four feet of water um, at max here hanging out and then they'll go all the way right up into the shore uh, but here we can kind of see one of the the blues and she's actually he or she I can't tell yet but uh, hanging out in that water you see that beautiful blue tail uh, wow it's really vivid and uh, they'll make a little circular nest and protect that. And so that's probably what's going on here in the shallows because you'll see spots where they'll collect, even even trash they'll collect and uh, make it into their uh, nest, which attracts other fish, uh, kind of like a raven or something else would collect bits of things to show off to mates. Uh, also here, We've got the other one still hanging out here. So just in this small little weedy area in industrial Seattle, uh, outside a boat dock, um, we've got a really cool little micro habitat. And you can see, wow, it's so blue and with the orange stripes on it, it's just, there's a really pretty uh, male. I'm guessing it's a male with that much color uh, out there. And it's not guarding a circular nest like the other one was here. So this one probably will have a hole bear, uh, dug with nest. Also, you can see the bubbles coming up there. Um, that's some sort of methane or sulfur or who knows what, but something that's broken down in the water. And we'll wait for the waves to stop here, but you can see everywhere here, it drops off and gets really uh, deep very quickly at this little boat launch beach uh, but what you have going on here is you have uh, Eurasian milfoil and Elodia, you know, you've got things like 
hornwort and all sorts of uh, plants that grow very very quickly and will get caught and wrapped around a prop or a propeller of a boat but if you wanted to you really could just grab this stuff and throw it in your aquarium although legally uh, if you have it in your possession you're supposed to be in the process of destroying it so uh, just a little side note but I just wanted to share this little quiet moment that we're in the city we're next to a boat that's clearly also probably leaking oil they've got the oil slick booms uh, around it it's an old uh, vessel and then I just thought I'd show you that we probably have maybe I, I'm guessing here but up to 10 feet of uh, height in this elodia or some sort of uh, plant and then also we have baby trout and uh, salmon straight down which I bet won't show up on on uh, the screen but they're just hanging out in that milfoil and uh, hornwort and other plants uh, they're just hanging out there to stay safe because they can duck into I mean this looks like it's only three feet deep right here but in truth it's probably 10 feet deep and it's just an insane tangle of of these uh, plants that are invasive so um, it definitely chokes out the local plants but it does give us an interesting opportunity to see some wildlife that uh, is existing even though we have all these other issues going on and uh, all the crazy traffic of boats and things but yeah, you can definitely see, since I've been talking, that fish is still there, still guarding its little cleared out sand spot. And uh, the other fish is out cruising the shallows looking for more nests and probably off to flirt with females who are guarding a nest or females who are just hanging out in the shallows here. Um, and there was some sparring going on, but I'm sure you guys couldn't see that uh, when I first initially uh, filmed it. The other thing that's a bummer, you see plastic bags and beer cans and all sorts of stuff, hypodermic needle caps, cigarette butts. Um, so that's a bummer, but life will survive. And uh, in these shallows, the water gets really warm to the point where you could probably do an at-home unheated tank. Now some loud boats are coming in, so I'm gonna wrap this up, but just thought I'd remind you to check your parks in your local ur urban areas, you know. it's It may not seem like a spot to go see wildlife and to watch fish in their natural habitat, but they will persist, they will make do, and they will be colored up beautifully, naturally, and uh, be doing their thing. You can't stop them from breeding, that's for sure. Alright guys, I will talk to you later. Swim on and have a great day.